So we're going to come straight in with our usual suspect, Semperfly Nano Seal Black in 12 -0. I'm just going to take that down the thread. I'm using a size 8 fully mill check hook and a 3.8 black speckle tungsten bead by Kindale. It's a great bead for this pattern. Quite enjoy using this. And I'm going to come down this hook right the way down. At this point, I'm just going to turn it in the vice. No point making it difficult for yourself trying to fit it all in in such a short area so I'm going to come straight in until I get to this point and from here I'm going to add our tail material tail material is an old classic pheasant tail this mayfly pattern I want it to be nice bold positive pattern when the fish are really feeding hard you know I'm thinking, or I'm not thinking of mayfly ash because anyone who's fishing a mayfly nymph, Euro style, during a mayfly hatch, should be shot with muskets at dawn. But uh, I'm thinking, you know, on a morning in between the mayfly hatch days, there's nothing quite hatching yet. But you're out in the river, what do you do? Let's run a few of these through. So we're going to have a relatively short tail, nice short stubby tail. And I'm going to wrap these fibres down all the way up the body, making sure I keep these fibres centralised on top as I go up, until I get to the head. A few securing wraps, and I'll trim that off. all the way back down now make sure that the tail is secured down to where your thread is see that extra thread right there just push that down until we're down here from here then we need to add our rib now the rib material is well, firstly, to tip it. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. We got it. We got it. Technical difficulties with uh, background staff again. It is brown thread. Now, don't ask me what it is. I don't know. I bought it in a, a bulk boy thing. With a brown thread, super stiff in the fiber. The only thing I found slightly close to it, uh, asking around other toys as well, is Danville Monocord in 1.0. However, I've never bought any more to tell you if that's the exact stuff. So you can use uh, basically a brown thread rib or something to that description. It's not too important to see the exact stuff, but as you see the pattern, you'll see the uh, effect it creates. And as long as you've got something that creates that effect, you'll all be tickety boo. So now I'm going to run some wax onto this. Nano silk because we're ready for the dubbing. Now the dubbing is our old favourite. Vacuna dubbing, JW Mayfly blend, lovely buggy blend. And we're going to start applying this stuff to the thread. At the top of the noodle, we're going to get relatively thin. As we go down, we're going to make it thicker. So from here, I'm just going to keep on adding this dubbing onto this noodle. And we're ready to go. I'm going to start wrapping now. Just at the bottom here, it's just a, just a light touch of dubbing, just to get us going. Take your time as you go. No need to rush this point at all. Once I'm this far up, I'm going to tip the fly back up. And just have a fiddle with this dubbing now. 
make sure it's all going on nicely. Just trying to get a thicker taper up this end. Still need some more. A little bit more wax on. And we're looking at stopping roughly a bead size away from the back of the bead. Although if you're going to go either way, I know sometimes in flight time you're like, well, am I a better bead? Should I go more? Go more. Always err on going further that way than leaving it short. Because I'm going to put a thorax cover on and pull it over. And if it's short, you'll have a bit of a, a hole at the back. I'm going to bring the thread up now and I'm going to make a little gap ready. But from here I'm going to grab my rib. I'm going to make sure it lays flat as a wrap. And I'm going to work my way up this dubbing. Pulling it nice and tight as I go. With a good number of segments through this. Opening slightly wider as I go up and secure. Doesn't matter if it's a pretty secure here, it's all going to be hidden. But I'm secure. And I'm going to come in here now with the scissors and just cut this tag end off. Like so. Come back up. Have a look at how you're getting on so far. Quite happy with the taper of that body. So from here I'm going to grab my pheasant tail feather again and I'm going to grab a good bunch of fibres now. Slightly more than I'd use for the tail actually. Like I've done here. I'm going to grab these. Now, I'm not using the tips this time. I don't want to use the very ends. You'll feel them quite stiff at the very end. And somewhere about here they'll start to loosen up. That's sort of where I want to tie them in. Where they're just starting to loosen up. I'm going to make sure that these lay on top of the hook without crossing over each other. And I'm going to go back until I pull over and there's no thread showing. And there's a nice taper off that last end of dubbing. Like so. I'm going to come in with the tag ends and trim those off. I'm going to come back up just to cure them all down like so. Working my way back to here now, I'm going to add a dubbing loop like so. Round the back and over, round the back and over. That's what I always do. I'm going to come around. I'm just going to park that dummy loop over here out the way for a second. Don't need it. Just going to park that there. Because what I need first is my dubbing. Because I'm going to redub this thread. And I'm going to fill this thorax with some spiky hairs here. As you can see, lots of nice guard hairs in there. And this time I want a nice, bulky, full thorax. Because I'm going to put this right up to the bead. And fill all that area of black thread. As you'll see here. I want to tuck it nice and tighten it up a bit. I want to tuck it right so the gap, the hollow of the countersunk bead I want I want filled. I don't want to have to lift this thorax cover over and it fall down there in a second. So that should be plenty. It's a good amount in there. I'm going to take the time just to straighten this hook up just so it's dead level and I'm happy. I'm then going to lengthen this thread out, move it out the way, threads over here, out the way. Because what I need now is my dubbing loop tool. I'm going to 
gonna hook that on. I'm gonna run a smidgen of wax through without the dubbing that's stuck to it. I'm gonna run a smidgen of wax. And I'm gonna grab a natural CDC feather, which I've oh so wonderfully prepared in the clip already. I'm just gonna shuffle those fibers up. I'm gonna turn the hook with this just so it sits nice. And I'm gonna spin that to secure it. And then I'm just gonna turn this thread with the CD see through this hairs here. Also gonna knock the camera with my knuckle. And I'm gonna keep going through until I reach the back of the bead, like so. Now I reach here, I'm gonna grab the thread again. Normally have a little uh, bobbin rest tool on this vise, but it's behind the camera. Well thought out by me today. So I just did the alternative, which is pull a load of thread off and dump the bobbin on the table to the side. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And secure down there. And then cut off the end of the dubbing loop. Now it's important, lick your fingers. And what I want to do is separate these CDC fibers either side. Secure a straw one down there, either side of the hook. Getting them wet helps to do that. And then once they're down either side, there's a little one sticking out the top, but that's alright. It'll get covered. I'm going to grab this pheasant tail and send it over the top. Doing my best to flatten it out with my finger, wiggle it around. I put one very loose wrap over the top first. And my plan is I'll secure this in and then show you. To create a nice, flat, non crossing thorax cover out of the pheasant tail there. Which I can just secure in nicely. Once I've done that, I'm going to grab some super cheap old nail varnish. I'm going to pull all the thread off the bead. That's a silly thing to do, isn't it? I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to come underneath. Put those missing wraps back in again, which I've pulled off. And I'm going to grab all the fibers back and whip finish. Gentle pull. Don't want to go too hard with nano silk, you'll cut straight through that pheasant tail. Just a gentle pull. Once you've done that, I'm just going to trim off that little end of thread. But I'm not quite done, so I'm going to lift these pheasant tail fibers up. Cut them as close as I can to the top of the bead. Lick my fingers again and get all of these fibers out of the way. We need every single thing out of the way now off the top of that pheasant tail. Like so, because we're going to grab this Golf Motor Oil Resin. You can use clear because the pheasant tail is brown. It will bring out pretty much the same colour. But I love the brown hue of this stuff. Many thanks to... Uh, Neil, Neil Darling, who put me on this stuff. Thank you very much, mate. It's great. And I'm just trying to just cover. I've got a little bubble in it there. Just trying to pop that. Just trying to cover all that pheasant tail on top, which I've pretty much done first attempt, and that very rarely happens. And then I'm going to come in and set it straight away with the UV torch. And then you've got a real nice thorax cover. I'm going to put it on the uh, organic fly holder. 
I'm going to brush those fibers back. I'm going to pull off any longer fibers. But in essence, that's the finished fly. You've got lovely leggy movement there, as you can see the front profile. Oh, look really good then. You can see the front movement in the profile, the thorax cover on the head, the legs and the little stubby tail. It's a great nymph. I use this when my fly are around in the morning when I'm, uh, there's no hatch yet, no bugs coming off, run this through a few pulls and I guarantee it's going to pull some ungodly sized trout out of the river for you. So yeah, enjoy that one guys. Um, and I hope it catches some fish. I'm really looking forward to fishing that this season. Thank you very much.